Well, here we are, start of a new week and the end of an old month now. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hotness, the last day of July. This is Monday the 31st. Now, we're going to jump on in to looking at some hot OTC penny stocks. Stocks under five bucks and lucky us, penny stocks are on all markets, so no holds barred for us. Now, when we're looking for hot penny stocks on this show, we're primarily doing it through the charts. We're looking for charts that have heat first. Then we go looking through the press releases and the filings. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you on a daily basis. And we've been doing pretty good. We've had a lot of runners. Now, I've got a few to share with you today. But before we jump on into those, I want to give you an update for CTXR. I know a lot of you are invested in this. And Friday was very disappointing because we were expecting a final decision from the FDA on approval so they could sell their drug, which was already approved back in November. It's an anti-cancer drug, so it was going to be a huge catalyst. Well, we did not get that FDA decision on Friday, but we did get it on Saturday. And then this morning at about 6.08 in the morning, we had a news press come out from the Wall Street Journal and they stated that City of Shares fall pre-market after FDA rejects cancer treatment. Now folks, I'm going to read what came out on Saturday. You tell me if you feel this is a rejection letter. Sidious Pharmaceuticals, Inc. today announced that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has issued a complete response letter regarding the company's biologic license application, the BLA, seeking approval for their drug, Lefirdum, also known as IONTAC. The FDA has required Sidious to incorporate enhanced product testing and additional controls agreed to with the FDA during the market application review. Importantly, there were no concerns relating to the safety and the efficacy clinical data package submitted with the BLA or the proposed prescribing information. No problems. We appreciate the FDA's expeditious review of our application. We intend to provide the additional data and remain fully engaged with the FDA as we continue to work toward approval. Now, folks, it isn't a final decision. It's not an approval. It's a delay. What more can you expect? We're always getting delays, but it definitely isn't a rejection, is it? So I feel hard pressed that Wall Street Journal reported this drug was rejected this morning because the market took a hard fall when he reported that. He's the one that made it take a hard fall. And luckily, she has been coming back today. Not fully, but she is recovering. Now, I do believe this is still on its way. It is just delayed. Personally, I'm holding my shares. I'm not telling you what to do, but that's what I'm going to do. All right, so let's jump into these three stocks that I've got for you today. All the stocks we're going to look at today have got hot charts, including Appia, Inc., ticker APYP. Now her chart, it's one of the easiest to identify for heat, the atypical breakout chart. Now don't go looking that up on Google. You won't find it. That's what I call it. This is when you've got the price way up underneath the 200 and that 200 day SMA is coming down like a ski slope. Well, when it starts to level off, you see the price sneak up underneath it, getting ready to break through. And as soon as she breaks through, she normally gets a nice run going. Now, this company's got a great product. They came out with a very innovative product back in November and launched it. And things have been a little slow. And here recently, they just changed up for management, and it looks like he's in a hurry to get business going. So I think now is a pretty good time to be considering APYP. She finished the day at a great buy price, just a little bit over a penny. It goes up just a little bit over two cents, you've doubled your money. Over three cents, you've tripled your money. So this is a real great buy price. She had a good day. She finished just a little under 26.5% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the better tier, the QB. It's called the better tier because they have to audit their financials to be here. That's good for us. We get the accounting, so we get fundamentals. That's good for them. That makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. Speaking of trustworthy, they've got those two green ticks I'm always harping to you about. Transfer agent verified and verified profile. There's a lot more important information being represented by these green ticks that you can't see. It's been validated behind the scenes. And that's the problem with the OTC. We don't get a lot of validated information. So whenever you see these green ticks, consider yourself ahead of the game. 
So what does this company do? Well, they tell us here that Appia Inc.'s wholly owned subsidiary is SleepX. This is an Israel research and development company that has developed a unique product for monitoring and treating sleep apnea and snoring. The technology is protected by several international patents and the company plans to start serial production in 2022, which they did in November. November 29th to be precise, SleepX has started marketing its flagship product, DreamIt, an AI-based wristband to treat the snoring problem through biofeedback. The company has announced that it has completed the test of the initial version of the product and plans for the production of up to 20,000 units per month. The price of the DreamIt will be $149. It is a non-intrusive, stylish wristband which uses a combined vibration motor and sensor system to measure real-time psychological data including pulse, blood oxygen level, blood pressure, and it records your snoring. The data from the wristband is recorded in the SleepX phone app for analysis and storage. After our proprietary algorithms properly analyze all data in real time, the app activates the vibration mechanism on the wristband with the right intensity and for the needed duration. The gentle vibration trains your brain to breathe correctly. Over time, your brain and body use the biofeedback to teach themselves how to sleep in the correct position and the proper breathing technique, leading to improved night breathing. So this is their hot, innovative product. It's that wristband that connects to a phone app which is connected to AI. It's recording everything in you and AI is working to help you. It sounds like a hot product. I wanna see where it's gonna go. But right now, it isn't going anywhere which is why I think they have changed management. Taking a look at the relative volume for the company, we did have an increase today. She jumped from 370,000 shares up to just under a million. That is nice to see. Share structure for the company. Outstanding share count is about 240 million. The restricted shares, what the insiders own, looks to be 186. Subtract that, that would leave us about 53 million in the float. Not a bad float. We can live with that. Financials for Appia. Nothing. She hasn't got anything here whatsoever. And they launched this in November. Now, I would have presumed a couple quarters later they'd have something to show for that. But we don't. Again, I think that's why they've changed the management. I did go through these current filings here, the four, the three. These are about shares that the insiders get, but they're not buying or selling, so we're not worried about it. And this 8K was about the management change, which we're going to go take a look at right now. So the news, I have gone back to that July 29th. We just got done reading about the wristband, how much it's going to cost. Then in May of this year, Appio was awarded a key patent for diagnosing sleep quality, a patent. We need to see those patents. That's how they protect all of their uh, technology. And the very last one I do want to dive into came out on uh, July 31st. That's today. Appia announces appointment of leading medical device industry executive Adi Shemer as CEO. So they inform us over here that the company announced the appointment of Adi Shemer as chief executive officer of the company. Mr. Shemer has been working with the company since February 2023 as a member of the advisory board. Now, they give us a lot of information here about his accomplishments and his experience, and I don't want to downplay it. We've just only got so much time. But I do want to quote the man here. The company's patented and AI-based sensing technologies for the tracking and analysis of breathing patterns are truly transformative in their ability to provide greater accuracy at a lower cost. The snoring and sleep apnea devices addresses a significant and underserved market, which could revolutionize how we diagnose and treat these conditions. Right now, the market is a $10 billion market. Looking ahead, our strategy is laser focused on advancing regulatory approval of SleepX Pro and DreamIt Pro, as well as commercialization of SleepX through direct consumer marketing, as well as establishing relationships with third party sales organizations, distributors, pharmacies, chain stores, online stores, and others. And they say down here at the bottom of this sentence here, uh, they are planning to start moving DreamIt in the next coming weeks. So you got new management, a hot product that hasn't been moving but needs to be moving. 
I think things are going to start to get moving, including the chart. <laughs> Let's go take a look at that. We're going to be doing all of our charting on Thinkorswim. This is that free trading platform you get when you sign up with TD Ameritrade, and that's free too. So we are looking at Appia Inc., ticker APYP. This is a six-month, four-hour chart. As you can see, she has been running downhill for this entire period, starting at a high back here in November of 7.5 cents and hitting a low of 003 just about a week ago. As you can see, she has started to make a move. The volume is starting to grow here. We're here pretty early. There's only been about five days of growth in volume. She has broken out over the 50-day SMA, had a nice strong push towards the 200, but it is far away. And she has settled up there at 0 0.012. And our 200 is up there at 0 0.015. We are very close. Oscillators are showing signs of strength. Look at this. Our PPO and our MACD are taking off. Look at the green bars getting bigger and bigger. And right now our RSI is just about in the overbought at 69.2. Looking at our 20 day one hour view. So she wasn't doing anything until the last three days. One, two, three. She started working out from underneath all of her SMAs, crossed the 50, had one big bar from the 50 break through the 200. That's my indication she wants to climb because she came back down under it, didn't fall any further down, stayed right on that nine day, and now she's pushing right through the 200 day SMA and climbing. Oscillators are looking great. PPO is pushing up very hard like the MACD. Still have green bars accumulating. RSI is up here at 62.5. And one of my favorite patterns is on the board. This is my PPO, percentage price oscillator, a lot like the MACD. And this is my ADX, which I put right up underneath my PPO so I can see patterns. The pattern here is this spread. You see that big V right there? Well, the ADX tells me when the trend is going to change. As long as this line, right now it's going down in a straight line. It could have been going up or sideways. It doesn't matter. As long as this doesn't change direction and keeps going down, that's telling me my trend has not changed. As long as this is going up, my trend has not changed. So as long as both of those are getting further and further apart, guaranteed your price is rising. Now, if either one of these change and start moving another direction, your trend has changed. That's why I like these two working together. Let's come on down to our five day, five minute. So there's your run up. She just pushed up off of it. I mean, she was just sitting there, laying there, doing nothing, and now she's pushing up. There's not any real big catalyst. We've got a change of management. They got a hot product, but they got no money on the books. We haven't heard of any deals that they've made, and yet we are seeing it starting to pull away. Something's happening. We had a high here of uh, one point, let's call it three cents. She came back down to that 50-day SMA. That's a good bounce. You want to see it come back down occasionally and resettle. It's kind of like a tag, you know, in wrestling. Just come back, tag it, and you can go back off and start running. And she immediately bounced over her 20 with that big bar showing us she wants to climb, got up on top of her 9-day SMA, and she's pushing away. Oscillators. PPO was pushing up. MACD had a bad crossover on this fall right here. What's going on? She's trying to cross over right now, but she isn't there yet. And our RSI is at a strong 60. And we still have our split pattern there. Things are still pushing further and further away. And that's what we need. Everything is looking good here, folks. I see a lot of momentum being built up. We just don't see it moving yet. But you can hear the engine getting stronger and stronger. I think APYP could break out. And you may want a piece of it. The next hot penny stock we're taking a look at comes from the New York Stock Exchange. This is the Kazoo Group, ticker CZOO. Now, when I tell you why we're looking at it, you're going to be thinking, you showed this to us too late, John. Well, maybe, maybe not. You see, Kazoo is in the used car buying and selling business. Online, you've seen lots of these companies. They are all over the place. And it is a hot sector right now, used cars, for the last few years. I've seen one company over in China that exploded. Uh, Caravana, uh, two weeks ago, was all over Bloomberg. Their price shot from $23 to $64 a share. 
And I think this company is going to explode too because all these companies are making big revenues. And this company's revenues are just exploding. They just keep getting bigger and bigger by leaps and bounds. And tomorrow morning before the bell, this company's reporting their financials. Right, you're thinking I sh am showing this to you too late. Well, let me tell you this in my defense. The last quarterly report that they brought out was on April 27th, and it was huge. It was dynamic when well, nothing happened that day. Nothing happened the next day or even the next day. Actually, it even fell a little bit. But on March 1st, it exploded all in one day. It went from $1.92 up to $4.63, I think. So there was a delay. I don't know if there's going to be a delay again, but at least you know about it now. And if she starts to run tomorrow, at least maybe you have a chance of getting in. But if she doesn't run tomorrow, you'll definitely have a chance to get in. So CZOO, she finished the day at $1.83 and she's already pushed up over 26%. Now you already know what the company does. Let's check out that relative volume. Well, that's getting better. And we got about 350% increase, jumping from 200,000 to 773,000. I wonder if it's going to be a lot more tomorrow. Share structure for the company. They don't give us a lot of information here. Our outstanding share count is about three quarter billion. And our float can be anywhere up to that. So it could be a low float. I just wouldn't hold my breath. Financials for the company. This is the exciting part. Look at the leaps and bounds here, folks. 2019, they're at $1.5 million, putting those three zeros behind any of the numbers down here. And the very next year, it went from $1.5 million to $221 million. Wow, I can't even calculate that gain. Then in 2021, right through COVID, she jumps again up to $887 million. And then at the end of 2022, she did $1.5 billion dollars kicking butt folks now i'd show you the quarterly but they don't show us the quarterly so this is all we got now i am expecting a big number tomorrow i can't guarantee that but the market has not slowed down and caravana was just in the news for what they did so i am expecting a big number disclosures for the company well we've really only got one disclosure over here to consider unless you want to look at all those 13 d's Every one of those 13 Ds is an investor who has come in, bought enough shares that they actually own a percentage of the company. They have voting rights now. And all of these came in during June. And you can have untold numbers of investors in each one. You can have just one or you could have 12. You never know how many you got. But that's all good news. You may want to check that out if you're interested in this company. The 6K, well, that's the announcement. They are telling us that it is tomorrow that they are going to be announcing their financials. So we've got a heads up. Hopefully there is a delay because the chart is looking good, folks. She's already starting to break out. She's getting over the 200, even though it's not one of those atypical charts, it still looks luscious to me. Let me share it with you. Taking a look at Kazoo Group, ticker CZOO. That's a very busy six month, four hour chart. We've got a low bubble here of 13 cents in December and a high of $4.63 in May. They had a reverse split of one in 20 in February. That kicked the price from 20 cents up to $4. And then she fell immediately down to $1.90, sitting right on top of this support. Now I got this support by cutting this surge in half. I used my Fibonacci and found the dead center of it and drew a line because I know the halfway point is a strong algorithm and it showed that. She bounced off it right here and she is breaking it right now here. So she fell all the way down to this low of $1.90. We looked at it here. This is March 28th. She was at $1.90 and the next two days she hit a high of $3.20. A nice gain if you took her. If not, she fell back down, but then she pushed back up and then fell fast and furious through that 200. Now it's right here, those financials came out, April 27th. And it wasn't until a couple of days later she took off from $1.90 up to $4.63. But it was very short lived. Take your gains, folks. She came back down through the 200 and landed on this support, which is where everything has been sitting all this time. Now, let's focus in on most current time here. 
You can see she was laying on top of this support, finally decided to bounce off of it over a 50, directly breaking the 200, had a lot of eagerness, has been staying up there, testing the 200 a few times, got themselves a golden cross and took off. She has shot today, breaking this support resistance line. She's at $1.83 where this resistance is at $1.80. That is great positioning. Volume is pretty steady and strong through here and our oscillators have just erupted. Our uh, PPO is pushing up to the moon, our MACD with lots of green bars and our RSI is already over 70. Looking at that 20 day, one hour view. Our low, $1.11, sitting here on top of this support. She pushed herself over the 200 and stayed up there just going sideways until she decided she wanted to test it so that she could run. She banged onto it here and she took off. She's up there at $1.88, looking like she's tagging that over and over again, even after market period. Now that is way up there, folks. That's a long ways away from all the other SMAs. So you may want to keep your eye out for a dip. Our oscillators are erupting right now. PPO is pushing to the moon. Our MACD is building a mountain here of green bars and our RSI is clear up at 78 now. Five day, five minute. So earlier in the week, she was falling, hitting a low of $1.32. It wasn't until two days ago she broke through that 200 and hasn't stopped climbing since. She's been pushing through the entire day on the nine day SMA bouncing only twice off of that 20 and she keeps tagging that dollar 88 and right now i really can't tell what price she's at but she's somewhere between a dollar 84 and a dollar 88 and look at all that volume that came in at the very end of the day our 200 day sma is churning up nicely oscillators our ppo is pushing up and our adx is pushing down it's not a real smooth line but as long as they're going apart we're good MACD is struggling right now. She's fighting, but she is pushing up and our RSI is now at 60. Folks, keep your eye on this. Tomorrow morning, they're going to report. I do believe it is eight in the morning what their financials are. You can get in before eight o'clock, depending what broker you use. I'm on TD Ameritrade. I can't trade until seven in the morning. So if you want to get a position, you can. She's on the New York Stock Exchange. You can buy it pre-market or you can take your chances, I'm just saying, and wait until they report and see what happens. And who knows, there may be a delay. You may be able to get in on big numbers at a cheap price. Last ticker we're taking a look at comes from the NASDAQ. That's what I like about penny stocks. They're on every exchange. This is ticker ACB, Aurora Cannabis. You wanna guess what sector she's in? Now, I'll be honest, folks, I've had plenty of opportunities to share cannabis stocks with you, but I've been reluctant to do so because the cannabis sector hasn't been getting a lot of love or respect. However, in saying that, you got to remember, not all cannabis companies are equal. What I mean by that, Aurora Cannabis is in Canada, where cannabis is legal. We're not legal here in the United States. Our companies are going through a lot of other BS. You got companies in Europe, companies in Israel. They all have their own stuff to deal with. Now, I am quite familiar with ACB because I used to trade. I used to trade. I traded cannabis stocks for two years straight, nothing but from 2018 to COVID. And I am very familiar with this company. I saw her when she had absolutely nothing. And then I saw her lose control. She was like a kid at a candy store. She was buying everything. As soon as the country became legal for cannabis, she had to jump in there and get a facility. She grew so fast and so big at the top that she got top heavy and fell over and they crashed and they had to start selling off their assets. Well, right now the chart looks super hot. It's an atypical breakout that is looking hot. And she does have a lot going on for her right now. So without getting very deep into this company, because there is a lot to talk about, I'm going to look at what is most prevalent and relevant so you can see why you might want to consider getting into this one. So ACB, she finished today a little over 56 cents and just under 6% gains. Now, I know there's a lot in yellow here, but I need to read this to you because this is really everything you need to know outside of deeper due diligence that we could do. I'm going to cover two pieces of news presses that do catch us up with what's going on. 
Aurora's wholly owned subsidiary, Aurora Cannabis Enterprises, is a licensed producer of medical cannabis. But they also produce recreational cannabis. I don't know why they don't say that here. But 82% of all their revenues come from the medicinal cannabis. The company operates a 55,000 square foot state-of-the-art production facility in Mountain View County, Alberta, known as Aurora Mountain and is currently constructing a second 800,000 square foot production facility known as Aurora Sky. This is right next to Edmonton International Airport and has acquired and is undertaking completion of a third 40,000 square foot production facility in Pointe Claire, Quebec on Montreal's West Island. In addition, the company holds approximately 9.6% of the issued shares in a leading extraction technology company, Radiant Technologies. They are on the OTC market. Um, they also tell us that they are in the process of buying 50% of Hempco Food and Fiber. Now, I don't know if this is already done. I don't know if this description is up to date. Aurora is the cornerstone investor with 19.9% stake in Can Group Limited, the first Australian company licensed to conduct research on and cultivate medical cannabis. Aurora also owns Padinos, a leading wholesale importer, exporter, and distributor of medical cannabis in the European Union based in Germany. As I said, They've got a lot of facilities everywhere, and I don't know if that's everything right now because I have not kept up with the company. But you can see, they're not a little operation. So what was the relative volume around the company today? That's what we want to see, 100% increase on millions of shares. She jumped from 4.3 million to 9.1 million today. Most excellent. Share structure, not a lot of information here. Outstanding share count is up here at 376 million. It ain't too bad. We don't know what the float is, but we know it's not going to be over that at least. Financials for the company. Well, these are a bit weird. Here in 2019, they did $187 million worth of business and they got to keep $109 million. The next two years, they did almost $200 million worth of business and lost money. How do you fall from 109 million profit to 14 and 17 million in loss? Well, something turned around fast because here in 2022, they're at 171 million with 16 million in profit. And I just got done reading in some article, I can't remember where I saw it, but their last quarterly has put them at 30 million profit. So they are growing. The financials are finally getting better. Taking a look at the disclosures, all right, we have to use the disclosures as their news. The news won't come up. I don't even know if they actually have them as news presses, but they're not coming up here. And there is one I want to share with you that came out July 24th. This is, like I said, the filing. They put the press release right in the filing. Aurora Cannabis announced a sale of Aurora Sun facility to Bevo, expected to provide incremental revenue and cash flow. Aurora Cannabis Inc., has closed the sale of its Medicine Hat Alberta facility, known as Aurora Sun Facility, July 21st, 2023, to Bevo Farms Limited. Aurora has a controlling interest in Bevo, one of the largest suppliers of propagated vegetables and ornamental plants in North America. Up to $15 million could be payable over time by Bevo Farms to Aurora in connection with the Aurora Sun transaction. They've already paid over $10 million to this date. They tell us down here that there is an expected reduction of $2 million in annual carrying costs associated with this. So they're going to have less to spend. $2 million they're going to be able to save. And I was also reading in that same article, wherever it was, that they, over the last three years, have cut their expenses down by $400 million. And the last quarter, they went from $35 million, dropping it down to $15 million. So they keep spending less and less money. That's because they're getting rid of a lot of their facilities and just don't have the overhead expenses anymore. All right, as I said, this chart is hot. And even though it's cannabis, I could not resist sharing this one with you. Come on, let me show you what this looks like. Well, there she blows, ACB, Aurora Cannabis. And as you can see, she's been in a downtrend all this time. That's a six-month, four-hour view. 
Back in November, she had a high of $1.63 and then fell like a torrential rain to a low of 48 cents just a few days ago. Now you can see volume is thick. She's never slack on volume. And right now she's showing a lot of initiative. She is breaking through that 200 over and over again. Even had an uphill trend right here trying to get through and then lost her footing, fell all the way down to this low bubble. And right now she is making that move. This was all a little bit too steep. She just couldn't do it. Now it's basically flat. She has jumped off of this low bubble with this huge indicator spike. It actually broke through the 200, came back down to the same zone, not lower, the same zone. So I feel she is going to climb. She then came down to this low spot right here on the 20 and bounced and that was it. She got on that nine day SMA, crossed her 50, crossed the 200, and she's up here at 56 cents, well above her 200. Now that doesn't mean she can't come back down. As a matter of fact, I expect her to come down to the 200. I expect her to jump up and down on it a couple of times, seeing if it's strong enough to hold her up because she's gonna wanna probably run. Our oscillators are very strong. PPO is pushing up, our MACD has crossed the signal line with the green bars accumulating, and our RSI is up at 65.5. This is a dreamy chart. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Our high about 19 days ago was 60 cents. She was wrestling with the 200, lost that battle, hitting a low down here of 48 cents, and then she turned around and she cut through. And look at that bar right there, folks, cutting through the 200 and coming right back to home. I know she's gonna climb, and she didn't let me down. Now we've got a red bar here doing the opposite. It's come down and it's landed here. Well, it is stapling. It's gone through the nine day and it stapled itself here. To me, this is a support. It's gonna hold all that's going on up here. So I don't see this as a danger sign. I see it as a good sign. All of our SMAs are turned and churning right now. They're all pushing up across this 200 day SMA. As soon as that 50 day SMA crosses, we've got a golden cross. One of the strongest technicals on the charts. You could see a nice pop with that. Oscillators show a little bit of cooling off right now because she's been going sideways. And our, our RSI is actually pushing up. That's actually pushing up right now and it is at 67. Let's look at that five day, five minute. Not a lot going on here until about three days ago when she got up over top of that 200. She's been bouncing on it a couple times and now she's launched herself. She did come back down to it. She hit it one time. That was our poke on that other chart and she's bounced back up and she's going sideways. I think this all looks good. I'm not crazy about the SMAs here. She could come back down to the 200 and bounce on it, but everything has been looking really strong. Except these, these oscillators are not looking good right now, the five minute chart. However, I think Aurora has got a lot going on for her. She doesn't have to fight the laws that are holding back companies here in America. Canada has got everything going on. The company's selling properties to companies they own, or at least own a large portion of, so they're getting control of the profits from that, even though they don't own it anymore. That's smart business. ACB, folks, she's got a lot happening. There's a lot going on that you need to dive into that I could not even get near. Please do your due diligence, not only on this one, but the others as well. I only give you enough information to make you curious and interested. You've got to convince yourself it's worth investing in. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.